Hi, I'm Ron Abbott with Helicopter Helmet, and we're here to do a sizing video and pre-flight inspections of your helmet. Now this video is dedicated toward PHI since they're the requesting agency for this video. Now, in front of me I have many helmets, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go into the proper installation of a liner. Now, when you get a liner, there's four sizes to this liner. If you look on the side of the liner, it'll have uh, CL number on it. It'll say 16, 1 quarter, 1638, 1612, or 1658. That's in reference to 16 inches down, which is for a Gentex helmet or a similar helmet, and then the thickness is the last two numbers. Now, this is important so you have the proper liner in your helmet because since there are four sizes, and if you're a really big head, and if you got a small liner, then it's going to be tight. In the reverse, if you're a really small person and you got a small liner, the helmet's going to be loose. So you need to first adjust the liner and make sure you've got a nice, comfortable fit. Not tight, not loose, but snug. So when you get your liner, first thing is to put it into the styrofoam liner that's in the helmet. Now I took it out of the helmet to show you the easiest way to do it as far as how to fit it, but this works the same way. You take the liner, you open it up a little bit, and then you flip it in half, and you fold it like a sandwich kind of. When you're in the helmet, you basically you set it in to where the front part of the liner is set up and then it goes along the edge. It goes along this edge. So now you notice you got the front half installed, back half is still not installed. So then you flip it over and you adjust the liner to where it grabs the Velcro points in the helmet. And then you basically massage it down into the helmet. Now, that is the proper way of having a liner in your helmet. I've seen other helmets, for people, they reverse it, they put it in backwards. This is the proper way. It's the fat side to the front, the thinner side to the back. And then basically, when you go on and try the helmet on, it should fit snug to where it, it's not gonna, the helmet doesn't move. It doesn't go like this. It stays down. Now, the second part of fitting the helmet properly is the nape pad in the back and in this case, the nape strap. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. now. Steve, go ahead and put on this helmet. Now, this takes two persons to do it. The best way to do it is for you to have your helmet on and then someone to come up behind you and properly adjust the nape strap. Now, put the helmet on and buckle the chin strap. Make sure that it's tight from here forward as far as snug. Now, if you notice, on the back of the helmet, you can put your hand in there. That's not a proper fit. So you want to adjust this nape pad area properly. So you basically loosen the strap, this strap right here. Make sure it's loose. Open the Velcro sides and tighten it up against the person's back neck. And then bring it down until the Velcro is snug across the back just like that. Then take this loose strap and tighten it. Pull the one side. Okay, that is a proper fit for the nape strap across the back of the neck. Turn around, head up. So now we got a proper chin strap, ear cups, and then the nape pad strap. So this helmet, you know, it's not going to be loose on a person's head anymore. All right, thank you very much. So, if you've got a helmet and you just issued a helmet, make sure you check the sizes on the adjustments. Check the proper liner. Make sure your chin strap is properly fitted with a pad. And make sure that the nape pad across the back is locked in and tight against your neck. And that'll give you your three points of contact so your helmet is snug. If you're wearing night vision goggles and you're wearing them, all of a sudden your, head, your helmet is bobbing forward, then it's either you got a loose nape strap pad across the back or you've got the wrong liner in the helmet. It's important that you have proper fit in case you have an impact on the helmet. It takes all the impact on the helmet and basically it cross the, uh, the mass of the helmet, the energy is expelled. And you have to do that with a properly fitting helmet. If it's too loose, too tight, you need to adjust it. And if you have any questions, just give us a call uh, or check with us and we'll walk you through it, no problem. And our number is very simple. Go to the website, helicopterhelmet.com. The number's right there. 
You can ask for any of the helmet techs and we'll be more than happy to walk you through it to make sure that you have the proper size liner and that you're doing everything properly. PHI is also here to help you. So if you need any parts or pieces, uh, get with your supervisor at the base. They'll get you the proper part. They always have liners in stock and they'll get you the right liner size. And you know, you can order a couple extra liners if you don't know exactly which one it is and go that way. Now, if you're wearing a Gentex helmet and it's got the plastic linings in it, there's four covers to that liner. And it works the same way on the memory fund liners that we have. If it's got one layer of plastic, it equals to a quarter inch liner. If it's got two layers of plastic, it's equal to three eighths. If it's got three layers of plastic, it's equal to a half inch. And if it's got four layers of plastic, it's equal to a five eighths, okay? The last one though is kind of adjustable. You can probably get away with a half inch. Uh, the memory film liners tend to be a little thicker on the, on the top end, uh, but you can play with it. If one is too tight, one is too loose, you know, we'll be more happy to exchange it for you. All right, thank you very much, and we're gonna go into pre-flighting of the helmet next.